let's review some of the ways that emotions and moods are relevant to organizational behavior and ultimately organizational success. Some people would argue that emotions have no place in business and are irrelevant to behavior. We have an enormous amount of research to suggest otherwise. When it comes to selection, emotional intelligence should be a hiring factor. It helps ensure that employees fit in. But emotional intelligence measures are extremely expensive. The good news is that positive emotions and moods have a contagious effect. They transmit from person to person. An optimistic leader can increase the likelihood that their followers are optimistic just by speaking positively, smiling, encouraging others, finding the good in what are seemingly terrible conditions, and so on. Positive emotions can also lead to better decisions and often more creative ones as well. Some research suggests that positive moods make people more flexible and open to new ideas, new experiences. In addition, research has found that workers asked to do dangerous work while in a negative mood were more likely to have accidents. Motivation is affected by emotions and moods. Positive moods can influence people's expectations of success. When they're in a good mood, they're more likely to accept high expectations for performance. When they're in a bad mood, they're not as open to these expectations. They have to accept the expectations in order to be motivated by them. People in positive moods are also more receptive of messages from their leaders and receptive to receiving feedback from their managers. Emotions can also have an impact on negotiations. Generally speaking, the best negotiators are those that remain emotionally neutral. In other words, they don't express emotion. Displaying emotion during negotiations, whether positive or negative, tends to have a negative effect on one's outcomes. When it comes to negotiation, it's usually best to stick to the data, the evidence, logic, objectivity. Affect can influence customer service as well, ranging from impacting people's attitudes, both employees and customers, clients, patients. Emotions can influence the effectiveness of communication between employees, between an employee and their supervisor, between an employee and the customer. Emotional contagion can play a role here as well. Happy employees tend to make happy customers. Research has also found that people who are in a positive mood at the end of the day take positive emotions home with them. In other words, a good mood at work can lead to a good mood at home and vice versa. A good mood at home can lead to a good mood at work. Finally, negative emotions are correlated with deviant counterproductive work behaviors, CWBs. Recall that these behaviors violate norms and harm the organization. When people experience negative emotions and when they sustain a negative mood over a long period of time, they're more likely to engage in CWBs. People who have more self-control, of course, are less likely to respond in an inappropriate or harmful way, but people with low self-control may lash out or do something that they wouldn't normally do in response to a negative event at work. 
researchers who study workplace violence sometimes find that there was an event or a series of events leading up to the act of violence that influenced the employee's decision to move forward with the planned act. These are just a few of the ways that affect and organizational behavior are related.